Okay, here we are, our number three. It's Monday. We're going to do our Monday Fukushima update for you. And before you turn away, don't, because there's an awful lot happening that's really important. And I don't want you to miss it, because you need to know, even if you live in Africa, it doesn't matter. You need to understand what nuclear power can and will do to this planet. And that is, essentially, destroy a lot of it, if not all of it. And time will tell about that, because most of the nuclear plants operating now are operating past their projected life expectancy. They keep getting extensions, and the pipes keep getting rustier, and things keep abrading. It's not a good situation. And if you look at the top of rents today, you'll see, first of all, David D.'s wonderful art piece on that uh, horrific attack on the USS Liberty by that wonderful little democracy in the Middle East, our ally, Israel, 1967. All right, let's not forget the liberty. But look down in the center column, latest Fukushima updates. All right? Now, the first story is uh, really another one that uh, just leaves you scratching your head. How can these things be going on and not make the mainstream media? Well, the the answer is uh, there's a cover-up. In, in England, they call it a D-notice. All right? Now, the headline is, is simple. NOAA. All right? You know NOAA, National Oceanographic and Aeronautics Administration. Beaches full of dead baby sea lions off California. Well, the beaches are actually on California, but you get the picture. Many aborted fetuses. Garbage bags filled with animals along the coast. Carts in freezers overflowing with dead bodies. And yes, this could someday apply to human bodies. One official said, pollution, I get this lying SOB. I wish I knew who he was. Official, pollution may well have had an effect. We deliberately didn't test for it. Should that guy have his butt kicked out the door tomorrow? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd give him notice right now. Pollution may well have had an effect. Well, what kind of pollution, sir or madam, are you talking about? Radioactive pollution? I doubt it. The lie is on. And then we deliberately didn't test for it. There's a quote. Who the hell are these people? They're part of the enemy. And there's a color picture of dead sea lions. Just disgusting. Uh, very, very sad. Now, here's here's the story, June 7th, from the Venice newspaper in Venice, California. Uh, the sad reality, this is a headline, of starving, dying sea lions on Venice. A breeze catches the scent of dead, rotting sea lion. The pungent stench lingers. It's hard to ignore. The dead sea pups are small enough to be tied up tight in black plastic garbage bags, but the larger adult sea lions lay right out in the open. So says somebody named Nick in Heal the Bay, It's quite frightening. They wash up on our beaches, weak and sickened, and in many cases dying, which is what you see in the bags. The National Geographic chimes in with, Number of starving sea lions in California unprecedented, raising questions about what the future holds after three years of mass strandings. More than 3,000 starving sea lion pups have washed up, and those are the lucky ones. The situation on California's Channel Islands, where more than 90% of the U.S. sea lion population congregates to breed and nurse young, is even worse. The few pups that have enough strength to leave the rookeries and make it to the mainland, get recorded as strandings, says Noah's Mark Lowry. There's a lot of death out there. 
but nobody, nowhere, do you see the word that begins with the letter R. Or the letter F for Fukushima, for that matter. So, what we have are stories here that all begin with the letter L. Lies. They're all lying. And I hope some of you out there are a little bit perturbed by what I'm reporting here. All right, now if that isn't enough for you, government expert, well, right away you got to raise an eyebrow or two, West Coast will soon be hit. Now, how many years have we been telling you this stuff? First of all, about the sea lions and sea life in general. All of it. Sea lions are at the top of the food chain. They're getting the most concentrated doses in the fish they eat. We've been telling you this for over four years, four and a half years now. Yoichi Shimatsu is on with us, of course. Yoichi was one of the first to say it on this program, but what, a week or two after Fukushima went up. Dana Dernford is on with us as well. We'll bring him on in just a minute. And he was certainly a man who put his life on the line to prove all this. We'll talk to him about his trip, just concluded. So here's the story. Government expert, West... Now get ready. Get ready, you realtors. West Coast will soon be hit by 800 trillion becquerels of Fukushima cesium-137. That's nearly equal the amount of total fallout deposited on Japan by the Fukushima catastrophe. The West Coast will soon be hit by 800 trillion becquerels of Fukushima cesium-137, nearly equal to the amount of fallout deposited on all Japan. Levels in the Pacific in the water are, quote, higher than expected. Another quote, main body of surface plume has reached the West Coast of the U.S., it never slowed down while crossing the ocean, contrary to predictions. All right, well, again, we told you all of this. The North Pacific Current runs about 12 knots. That stuff is coming. No slowing down, and it did. And it's piled up against the West Coast now. It's been here. It's just piling up to levels that they've never seen before. And it's going to continue to pile up for centuries to come. You think there's going to be anything left on the ocean in terms of marine life? Think again. You people will have lovely ocean views as you visit your oncologist and come home to admire them. But that's going to be about it. All right, first off, let's uh, welcome back Yochi Shimatsu. Yochi, how are you? Oh, I'm okay. I'm in Thailand, but you have uh, some frightening sights. I was in Bangkok uh, just a few days ago. And as I was coming to the airport uh, 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 toward Bangkok, I saw some big clouds coming in. And uh, there was one cloud that looked just like stuff you see in Fukushima, sort of a large mushroom cloud connected to a very long extended cloud, very strange light. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the spring currents of bringing uh, waters from uh, the Pacific Trench, or the uh, Philippine Trench, excuse me, to the coast of southern China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore. And uh, finally, uh, you know, they tend to go southward, finally toward Bangkok. So we're seeing this massive spread of radiation in the atmosphere and in the currents, in the fog that's generated, clouds that are generated. So uh, I do believe the entire upper atmosphere is weakening. I, I remember I told you about six months after the Fukushima incident, sort of an eye of God in the sky, uh, over the you know, ocean, which was visible from uh, Khao San Road, sort of the hippie uh, road in uh, where a lot of backpackers like to stay in Khao San. Thousands of people were just flabbergasted by the sight, were just like stood still. I wish I had my camera on me watching all the people just looking at this awesome sight. But it indicates the upper atmosphere is starting to really go. When that goes, we're going to have not just weather problems, we're going to have a lot of other problems like oxygen problems in our environment never mind carbon dioxide, uh, it may be really the final extermination event yeah, on the horizon. Yeah, the yeah. other thing about this estimate uh, that we heard of, eight, 800, you know, of, the, of the, you know, the trillions of becquerels coming across the West Coast, I think that the growth 
underestimate the, you know, off by 100 to 1,000 times. But actually, it's a very low estimate. The, uh, you know, there's the, two sources of, uh, uh, of, uh, of radiation. One okay, is we got uh, water, Yoshi, Yoshi, water. Yoshi, we got some yeah. beeps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, we got, do you hear beeps on your phone? Beep, beep. Beep. No, no, no. This okay, it may be a low no, battery, no, I don't know. Sort of inter- Interference? No, no, this is, the battery's fully charged. This is okay. something, i got to get a new phone, I guess. It's, it was fried. I've been flying through Asia. Yeah. So right. I think uh, so, the okay. basically circuits in my phone right. are nearly burned out. All right, we'll get along with it. Uh, so, 800, anyway, so 800 trillion becquerels, you think, is way too low? I, I think that's an under... I think it's a pretty gross underestimate. You know, okay. it's from Fukushima University. Uh-huh. Which is very much connected and funded by Tokyo Electric Power. So I uh-huh. believe it would be much higher if we count, uh, the runoff, which is fresh water floating across here. Most of it floats in the U.S. because, you know, it does merge into the North Pacific current. But the other huge source of radiation hitting the United States and, uh, Canada and the Arctic are the storms, uh, that are coming out of the Pacific, out of the Philippine Trench. And from what I can tell, you know, I, I can discern, let's say, or geek up, is that's from the solid radioactive material that sank into the trench, Japan trench, and, moved, and over the years has moved down into the Philippine trench, causing these unprecedented numbers of typhoons, typhoons heading to Fukushima, and those typhoons moving into the Bering Strait, and then circling around, hitting Alaska, uh, the Pacific Northwest, okay, the Canada, the Arctic. So that would be a whole additional amount, and that 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 a lot of that, unfortunately, I believe, is containing a lot of plutonium uh, and tritium. Because uh, from what I could tell from my readings, that uh, very high level uh, war grade plutonium that was being uh, processed into warhead material in these underground secret labs at thermal, at coal burning and oil burning plants. Uh, in Hirono and in um, and, and, and south of there, uh, two two major plants. A lot of that material, from my readings, was dumped into the ocean. The, the trail leads to fishing ports and therefore to barges, which were dumped in the Pacific. So, what's hitting the West Coast, I believe, is going to be mu- is much larger than they're suggesting than all estimates. And well, it makes sense. It's going to be far yeah. worse. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, in the it coming makes years, sense. Yeah. And say next year, the year after, because these well, it's just, storms it's are piling up. through, and they're increasing. Yeah, it's piling yeah, in up. Other words, there's yeah. more and more uh, uh, surging out of the deep sea coming over to the U.S., yeah. and which accounts for these you know, massive numbers of aborted uh, fetuses from sea lions. And it is happening in humans because, again, now uh, in, you know, uh, the June report, the mid-year report finally came out from the health ministry, which tabulates... Uh, the death rate, okay, and, and we've seen this year another record drop in population, okay, another record drop in population, and a lot of that was aborted fetuses like we see among foreigners, among women in Hong Kong and Singapore who went to Japan just for a short time and suffered serious embryonic damage, you know, embryos that no longer look like even mammals, much less humans, but look more like reptilian or amphibian species, okay, coming out of these women. Uh, Japan birth rate sinking to another record low at the fourth year in a row since 311. And now the death rate also surging uh, by another 4,000 some deaths uh, per annum. This is after annual increases after the 2011 Fukushima disaster. So death rate, leading heart, leading cause, cancer. Okay, uh, excuse me, uh, heart, uh, yeah, cancers, cancers, okay, and the second is uh, heart failure. So, again, very much in line with, um, uh, you know, a, a nuclear major radiation event, particularly since this cohort, this group, would be should be healthier. These are people who did not endure, let's say, the war years, as te- uh, over the wartime period as teenagers, okay? They might have been uh, uh, born into war, but after the war, uh, their you know diets and health care radically improved. So, so there should not be this stunning another fourth year in a row rise in the death rate and a drop in the birth rate. So, what you say, what happening, what's happening in seals could be happening in humans. It is, and we know in California 
a lot of thyroid damage to young, uh, to infants, young children, uh, a lot of uh, uh, miscarriages of late and so forth, you know, a real crisis onshore in California in the human population. So, yeah, the kill-off is definitely underway. It's not just begun. It is well underway now and uh, perhaps unstoppable. You know, so this is... And people have got to uh, really pay attention to this now. There's no more hiding. You know, you can run, but you cannot. You just can't. You can't run anymore. There's no place to run. People have got to. No, you, you got it up. right. You got it right. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh... Yeah, if you don't face up, you're just going. It's a death. It's basically a horrifying. It's going to be a horrifying death. There are ways to avert that. Yeah. There are ways to take yeah. precautions. Yeah. The government is not doing its job of telling no, people. No, not telling people. We have anything. been for four years since this. Yeah, well, and we'll continue. Yeah, yeah, we'll continue. All right, let's uh, say hello now and, and welcome back. Uh, and thank God he is yeah. with us, uh, Dana Durnford, who is home now. His uh, his epic one man journey, all up and down <laughs> the West Coast, off the West Coast to British Columbia, Russia. through the it, just a uh, true major motion picture. Uh, he's home and he's he's okay. Uh, welcome, thank Dana. You. Thanks for being here. Thank you, and thanks, Heidi Oshie. Hey, everybody. Hey, you know, I wanted to add to your you conversation. I was concerned about you. I bet you were. Yeah, and concerned and so about was you. a lot of people. An email. Yeah. It was a lot of drama, yeah. and we, yeah, we've I'm done this because we felt that urgency. He's so alive. He is. He's alive yeah. and kicking. And there was a lot of drama. Yes, yeah. indeed. That's yeah. good, man. That's uh, that's best. Uh, news I spent. Thing, you know, she left that. I spent two yep. weeks in bed, <laughs> and I slept three times a day, and I slept all night. And then I've been uploading pictures for the last two weeks, but then I still sleep all day, and I still sleep all night. But I'm I'm going to be heading back out in another seven or eight days for a ten day trip with two more people with me this time, and we're going to go pretty easy. <laughs> Two times a day, and okay, just, just finish okay, up, just clean up, the clean up. For the benefit of, of the people listening to this program, can you spell out the name of your website again for everyone to look it up and see all that raw <laughs> data, all that data that you collected? Yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing can amount that? of data that we're rolling up. Okay, and yeah. I'm just hang on. I just wanted to make sure. You know, oh, it's um, easy. No, nuclear. I, I got, I, the nuclear proctologist, P R O C T O L O G I S T. It's just it like just, the I was doctor. Writing, I was writing down about what Yoshi was talking about. And I didn't want to forget it. I uh, just wanted to touch up on that before forget about it. And I'll come right back to that uh, if you can afford me a few moments here. Uh, look, you know, what Yoshi was telling you and Jeff was telling you, folks, I, I want to put it in a little bit extra perspective from another angle. And I want you to think about the three meltdowns. And that Chernobyl stopped after 10 days and was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. But if it was like 20 days, mm -hmm. it would have been 800 Hiroshima bombs, mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. And if it had it kept going all the way up to the day, it would be equal to over almost a half a million Hiroshima bombs. Wow. And, and, but but it stopped yeah. after 10 days. Yeah. And it was only equal to 400 only, I say. But it was equal to, uh, to amazing 400 Hiroshima bombs. Yeah. And the reason was because it was a chain reaction. And so it's consuming everything around it. And there are atoms, too. And there are uh, aerosol and atomized. And, but now Fukushima, and that's why Yoshi is telling you that, folks, is because Fukushima is three meltdowns and then the fuel pools on top of that. This is an amazing amount of inventory and that each reactor was holding around and capable of, anyway, 3,450 assemblies. And each assembly is 80 rods and each rod is 18 pounds and 12 feet long so then the fuel pools have the old cores from the reactor stored uh -huh, on the roof uh -huh. of it, and they also disappeared now they sprayed salt water on it and that created zero salt peroxide hydrogen buckyballs and this salt water sulfur combination of extraordinary heats phenomenon was known back in the 40s and the 50s through nuclear testing in the ocean now when that reactor is melting down to the earth folks this is why Yoshi is so adamant about what he's saying because he understands the, and I'm sure he's explained this but I, I want people to hear that metal and that's falling down on top of these melted reactors were atomized and aerosol and become ionized and radiated so it's not just the inventory from the fuel pools or the inventory from the reactors it's all also, all the water they're pumping in on top of it, and that runs over, becomes ionized and radiated. Yeah. And that yeah. the rods, when it blew up, were spread all over the site, and they're splitting the atoms, and that they paved the harbor, or Port Smetto 
over that entire harbor because they had a huge issue. A lot of that landed on the tsunami debris. A lot of the fallout, because the tsunami debris was moving at 5 to 10 miles an hour off the coastline, it was easy when the winds were west for all that radioactive fallout to start landing on that and heavy. And so that becomes highly contaminated. And that irradiates it too. But every time it rains over Japan, see, it's not just Fukushima, folks. It's not just Japan either. I mean, it's all over Canada. Every time it rains in Canada, the U.S., China, Vietnam, Alaska, it, it's washing back down into the coastline, into the ocean. It's being re-liberated. And when Yoshi talks about tritium, and I'll leave it on that, when Yoshi talks about tritium, think about, look up the, the drinking water standards in your country for natural radionuclides. And alongside of it, you'll see what they got in there for artificial radionuclides. And they're going to be millions of times higher than what's acceptable for natural radiation. So you might, yeah, you need to ask yourself those questions, yeah. folks, and, and not just take it, okay, and, but you have to say, well, why? And that's why Yoshi does so well and Jeff does so well. Uh, the nuclearproctologist.org, folks, the, the front page is where I'm uploading every day. I'll be uploading all the way up until... Uh, next Monday, every day. I haven't missed a day in the last 11 days. Wow. And then on the 16th, can I put a little plug out here? On the 16th, I do 24 hour Fukushima. Because I don't think people understand how, you know, there's so much to be covered in this that 24 hours is nothing to cover some of the material on, on this. And, and that's, that's how big of an issue it really truly is. I mean, did you, you, you all heard, I hope all of you heard, uh, the two stories I, I skimmed over at the beginning of this hour. Yes. Uh, those those are, are hugely important stories. Yeah. They're symptomatic and emblematic of a catastrophe that goes beyond anything in recorded history. Anything. And some of you say, well, yeah. we're getting tired of hearing about Fukushima. Well, I'm sorry, but we're here to report reality, and that's what we do. And these these two men have literally risked their lives on your behalf to help you understand what your government's have done to you and it's not over and you people who live along the coast I mean I'm a 150 175 miles inland uh, nothing but mountains between me and the, and the marine layer so I've, I've got a, at least a buffer and uh, I'm taking extra precaution nutritionally uh, as we've talked about many times but uh, we'll take a break and come right back with Dana and Yoshi as we uh, continue to bring you up to date on the biggest threat you face right now. Uh, now, next week it could be something worse. We don't know. But right now, this is, this, is the, uh, this is the grand prize winner of death, debilitation, and disability. And we'll be back. Okay, and we're back with Dana and Yochi. Okay, Dana, uh, as you look back on your trip and all the data you've gathered, which you are trying to upload, where are we in terms of, of BC? You heard what's going on in Southern California, the Channel Islands and the beaches, the massive death at the top of the food chain, which is very disturbing. What did you? What do you have to? Uh, Whoops. What do you have to add to that regarding uh, British Columbia? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. You're right. And so I was a little bit more jollier at the beginning there than I am when I talk with this particular part of the conversation because we just done 160 days straight on the ocean and we went through the archipelago. It was 26,000 islands up here. And then we managed to get over to the coveted Queen Charlotte archipelago. It was about 350 kilometers long for people that are not familiar. And I went through it twice. And now we went through it in the winter, so it's different going through the winter than it is the summer. But it, it, it had to be done. We had to know for sure because of the, what this, what we saw. And so the original pictures uploaded the first seven days were all laying gear on the most northwesterly point of Canada. And the underwater footage uh, is, and the pictures are also up at the nuclear. And you got to put the folks, T-H-E, nuclear, then proctologist.org to get the site. And the underwater pictures were not showing any shells whatsoever, which is extraordinary all on its own. And that was the most significant uh, thing you're going to see if, if you know anything about underwater was that no mussels uh, shells, there was no clam shells, there was no... Um, Gooey duck shells, there was no oyster shells, there was no scallop shells. 
There was no periwinkle shells, no snail shells. There was no other kind of vegetations. The urchins weren't... There was lots of urchins, though. Well, that doesn't mean they were healthy. And that's the point I'm trying to make, is that there was all this kelp there in one spot, but none of the urchins, even though there was a lot right there, and you can see it in the picture, none of them were climbing on the kelp. Now, I was an ex-commercial diver for 14 years, and one of the things I'd done was harvest urchins, and they would fall, you would knock them right off the kelp into your bag, rather than try to break them off a rock. And a sea urchin is full of spines, so it can pin itself really sharply to that rock, and you only get one kick at knocking it loose. And the sea urchin is picked as a... Um, product for Japan, basically. Now, that was one of the rare products that, that we see in the footage whatsoever, and we see saw, uh, two um, sea enemies, and basically, out of, the, um, out of the 5,600 highly visible species that should have been deer, uh, all we seen was algae and sea urchins, uh, and all the starfish, but we did see, not very many, we didn't see any underwater, well, I don't think we seen one, maybe one underwater in all the footage. Now, the, the footage, I, I put up footage today, um, Fukushima's underwater combo, Louise Narrows, how to go IBC Canada. And so it's pictures, video, and underwater video of this unique passage, and the pictures are up there. They're the main pictures, the data front page is the main pictures, and that is completely eradicated. Now, that was one of the most unique spots because it's on the back of the islands in the Queen Charlotte's and the archipelagos that are isolated from the rest of the world, and the ocean has to flood through there four times a day in different directions as the tide changing. And this whole area is really all the yachts and wealthy people would get there. And it's uh, the natives themselves. Uh, and there's before pictures of that, and easy to find on the internet for anybody that wants to go look it up. It's just the documentation is what we're covering right now. We want to put the raw files onto the internet. And so what we're looking at now uh, shows there was no carcasses left anywhere definitively in all the pictures. Um, and so that's an extinction event, 100%. And all we're seeing is young animals and that any adults that were seeing dirt, lethargic and unhealthy looking, and that everything was either deformed, in, and it wasn't many. Uh, there was a, a section of starfish on the coastline, but that was only uh, leatherbacks or the leather starfish. And we got reports from the commercial divers that I hung out with for six weeks up here in the Charlottes when they were harvesting them, a lot of my old cronies. And they were perturbed and disturbed that uh, in one area of Crona Island in the Charlottes down not too far from the hot springs, all the starfish that they seen had were just legs, no bodies. And that, that literally sh um, shook them, and they sought me up because they knew that's what I was doing. And it really, it was really a you know a point in the moment. Now the pictures of the west coast of British Columbia itself and the twenty six thousand archipelagos, there is no mollusk whatsoever on the coastline, completely annihilated. There is no species out of the water, and we know in in one archipelago off Spicer Island, folks is. Um, there's amazing archipelagos of uh, islands and fjords and inlets and open ocean, and this um, now we you know this is a year-round environment. You don't get ice in the, in the winter time or nothing like that. And and the five starfish that I did find, every one of them were deformed, and it was the same thing on the inside passages. On the trip back down after 160 days, I counted 70 birds. I should have been counting around 5,000 per square mile. And so that is frightening, just absolutely frightening. Now, well, we're going to go back up and do 10 days for birds and insects and uh, hit the outside of the west coast of the islands. Yeah. And we'll have two boats yeah. and three people with cameras and just quick up and quick back, and we'll be uploading that right well, away. Well, the insects are going to be particularly revealing, I think. It's going to be fascinating. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, there is nothing, there's no snow on the shoreline. All mm -hmm. the habitat is completely missing. There's nothing there for any migratory animals and birds to uh, feed on or sustain themselves on. And like the aquats and all the stories you cover, a lot of these animals die off. Now, what's really staggering about everything that's up on the site already from the trip is that that underwater footage, you can see all the way to the bottom, and you shouldn't be able to. 
because it should be full of krill this time, that time of the year and this time of the year. And that's what sustains the mass of 5,000 birds per square mile. Um, and everything else, all the whales and, and all the fish that have to feed off the migratory fish, the migratory animals and birds that are dependent upon that. And then the shoreline and the lights and the animals on the coastline and those archipelagos don't have many natural predators. And so they're very visible on the shorelines. Um, and uh, it, was, it was very eerie on the way back, uh, to put it, is the point I want to make on that part was that there was nothing. It was flat calm. The only time in the whole trip it was flat calm and sunny it was after 160 days the whole way home. I mean, it was flat uh, for 425 miles. And it, there was no birds. It was weird. There was two birds got out of my way. And I'm traveling at around 50 uh, kilometers an hour uh, on a 24-foot Coast Guard. Got it. Um, you know, and so mm -hmm. I should be swerving around birds mm -hmm. because there's so many birds. I should be wow. just taking 10,000 pictures on the way down. Yeah. yeah All right. you. Hold on a second, Dana. And Yochi, when we come back, let's get you to weigh in on this. What uh, What is happening over there is there was a call the day before yesterday that Fukushima, the entire province, county, prefecture, apparently should be abandoned. That was that was the call, as I saw it. We'll get your take on that and and more. And how about being a realtor on the West Coast, huh? Selling the Ocean View property, sweating every time you talk to somebody. Hold on, we'll be right back. Okay, uh, let's get back to uh, Yoshi Shimatsu, who is no longer a real estate agent, representing Malibu View property. Yeah, uh, what Dana was saying about uh, the mollusks, you know, the clams and so on, very frightening because, you know, they, they see on algae, plankton, the smallest sure. one-cell uh, life form, the means... The ocean really is massively contaminated, and right at the base of the food chain. Well, when you, uh, Yochi, when you can uh, see, Yochi, when you can see the yeah. bottom of the ocean through 30 feet of water, yeah. or 40 feet of water, which you can off, uh, apparently off Santa Barbara yeah. as well, that's an example right. of totally denuded ocean life all yes. up and down the coast. This is a total extinction event for marine life. And um, unfortunately, it's creeping on shore, as we know, through insects, birds, yeah, yeah. Uh, sea mammal, you know, yeah. mammals. So in other words, uh, through the fog that's coming in, this is an extinction event. Very clear as the water there. And uh, it should be the major, I think, national security priority right now, uh, the United States and Canada, and maybe Mexico and other you know, states along the Pacific seaboard. Certainly, it should be for Japan, and Japan, we know, has turned a blind eye. It's culprit on this. It's an international. The government is actually acting in a criminal, absolutely criminal manner you now toward uh, the international community. It's a criminal government, which is basically nearly deliberately in violation of you know, every every kind of known you know international law, law of sea, and so on. So, so basically. Very, very serious for Dana reports. I think everyone should look at the website and one will know that this is not some sort of toxic algae substance because the algae would still be alive, presumably. You know, the toxic algae would survive. The red tide would survive. It's not a red tide event. You know, this is definitely something on another order of magnitude, the major radiological uh, disaster and extinction event. Now, you said that this event is so great in, in Japan now, of course, Fukushima, that one of the stalwart cities, you got to understand the official, the mayor of Hirono, Satoshi Endo, said all of Fukushima and all the region affected by Fukushima should be evacuated. It's not a place habitable for children, especially for human life anymore, for you know, domesticated animals and so on. He's talking about total evacuation. Why is this important? Because Hirono is a contractor town. This is a town totally controlled, company town by TEPCO, by Hitachi, by GE, and the mayor there is throwing in the towel. He's seen his own the townspeople dying off. There's empty lot after empty lot. His homes get torn on, torn down as people die away. 
as, uh, you know, the cancer rate increases, and there's no way to report. So this is a man really at the heart of it, and his town is also the host of the Tepco uh, thermal power plant. This is supposedly a non-nuclear oil-fired plant. The residents there told me that massive amount of nuclear work has gone on there for decades, and if you look at Google Map photos, you'll see very large parking lots where they're putting garbage bags on top of that to hide the major uh, nuclear weapon site that were underground there at this site. And the, the, the uh, locals are saying, they kept, I kept saying this is an oil-burning plant, and uh, they kept insisting that there's nuclear work going on there, and that is part of the Fukushima 2 and 1 nuclear complex. This is what the locals said, that there's been plant mutations, flower mutations, but for decades now. This thing obviously had a major, major serious incident there in the tsunami and earthquake hit on 311, and it was given the highest priority, even more than Fukushima 1, for uh, thousands of nuclear workers, and this is the plant from which I track the path of the nuclear waste going out to a fishing port and then disappearing out to sea. And, uh, mm. So this this warning from a man who is an absolute insider, this is a place that got mm-hmm. a huge sports center, a big school, everything from uh, Tokyo Electric, and mm-hmm. he's finally saying is uninhabited. You cannot, you know, cavitate this place. It's killing people here. It's killing the entire population. So this is an insider, uh, a town that's on the inside. Haramachi is another one north of that Miyagi Prefecture, another major nuclear weapons lab. I believe at least a 1,000 nuclear workers were killed there. Locals told me much of that plant, deep as it was, much of the material was washed away as they tried to evacuate the plant. Wow. Terrible, terrible wow. things. Yeah, terrible things. See, and if you look at Google Map, if you look at Haramachi, the nuclear, uh, thermal plant, you will see a pit there that goes down at least 10 stories to two massive chambers, one that's about five stories deep on Earth, and right by the ocean there, right by the seawall, another that's about 10 stories down. Mm. Massive nuclear weapons labs, okay? And all, mm. a lot of that material was either washed at sea or was deliberately put on barges and dumped into the Japan Trench, maybe even towed down to the Pacific, uh, to the Philippine Trench and dumped there, causing these uh, abetting these massive typhoons that are electromagnetic in nature, all of them heading towards Fukushima and other the sea currents bringing radiation to the Southeast Asia. This is, this is you know, a crime. This is like crime on an unprecedented scale. There's never been a crime this large committed in human history where entire regions of the world, the uh, uh, North American West Coast, uh, the Arctic, the American Mid- Southeast Asia, Northeast uh, Pacific, are being threatened with extinction. There's never been anything like this in the history of mankind. And and, and this was deliberate, uh, largely deliberate, because they have been honest about what they were doing and tried to contain this disaster as we advocated right away. I think the first talk I had with you is we've got to contain this disaster to this part of Japan. If it spreads, the horses will be let loose out of the corral, Correct. and the rest of the world will be doomed. Yep. I, I think I explained that to you several you times. You sure did. And, and nearly despair, yeah. I went up there, tried to teach people decontamination techniques, tried to argue it's going to take 30 years or maybe even three generations mm-hmm. before we can get this in. A lot of people will have to die courageously, make that choice mm-hmm. to contain this disaster so we don't kill the rest of the world. That was a thing we had to do four years ago. And that was what the government deliberately did not do, okay? And the U.S. government is there, the Department of Energy, you know, GE, Westinghouse, they're all there, the IAEA, are all there complicit in this ecocidal, genocidal crime of all time, okay? High, highest crime of all time. And they got to be brought to justice, because that's the last thing the last person on the planet does, is we've got to bring these, you know, these fools to justice somehow. Okay, so. Yeah. so anyway, so the extent of this, when the man is saying he, he needs to move his children out of there, the government, the Ministry of Education, I, I explained this to you when I was inside the zone two years ago. I said, no, three years, two, two, uh, two and a half years ago, I spoke with you 
I'm from, from inside the uh, radiation or, or inside Tokyo because they cut off my call there, explaining that the government was not disallowing, was not allowing the children of Hirono, who right. has massive radioactive contamination, mm -hmm. to attend schools in other towns or cities. They're going to take them out of enrollment and force them, force them to come back to the local school, okay? And the townspeople were despairing. They said, how can they just a death sentence to bring these children back? Not just for the children, but it's for the heartbreak for the parents to see their children have to live in a radioactive zone, eat radioactive food, as the Ministry of Education had ordered them to do. So the mayor finally, years later, two years later, belatedly admits the policy was wrong, people must be evacuated, and, and there are other, uh, I think the uh, mayor of, of uh, Tokaimura has said that, that even further down, a non-Fukushima nuclear site, Linked to the death of those 140 million whales off the coast of Japan, okay? Link, that, those sites are linked to the death of those dolphins there. He said the whole town there should be removed. That it is insane to have 14 nuclear reactors on Japan's Pacific coast. It is insane to have people live there mm -hmm. near those plants. It is much too dangerous, and especially children must be moved out, okay? Now... The truth that we have been asserting for more than four years, okay, uh, since the start of this disaster, is now being expressed by the people who were collaborators of Tokyo Electric uh, uh, Power Company, collaborators of the Japan's Nuclear Research Institute, uh, people who are at the very heart of the nuclear establishment, who are receiving millions of dollars uh, uh, for their townships from that industry, are now yeah. coming out with the... Uh, this has been the disaster. You're going to, this yes, yes, event. yes. You're going to see yeah, yeah. the same thing on the West Coast. All the communities along the coast in the next three, yeah. four, five, six years are going to be doing the same kind of thing because this yes. stuff migrates there is inland. a breaking point, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Dana, yeah, there is uh, a breaking point where you finally have to face that reality because oh, people yeah. around you, people you love and know, are dying. Dying, your right, are dying. right in front of you. That's when yeah. you will break and realize you have been wrong, wrong, wrong for years, and you have participated. You are partly responsible for the mm -hmm. deaths and injury to those people, the disease that they face, exactly. and then you must face up to That's why these officials are so broken. You know, they're broken men because oh, they finally woke they're, up. They're, yeah, they're old, old, old prostitutes. Dana, thank you very yeah, much for the sure. report. Uh, I am, you are one of uh, my heroes. Thank uh, you. Always will be. You too, Jeff. Oh, thank you. And you take care of yourself, and we'll report uh, right. here with you anytime you want to come on. You let me know. Yeah, next week will be a cool one before I head back out. But do so that you guys. I'm sure everybody take care. Okay, of we'll get you. We'll get you on next week then. All right. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Dana. Good to hear from you. Very good to hear from you, Dana. Glad you're well. Really. For sure. Yochi, uh, I don't know what to say. What I started the program off with was just, you know, a, a couple of pieces of an enormous avalanche of horror that we're facing. And the communities along the coast are going to be doing the same thing that the communities in yeah. Fukushima Prefecture and the others are doing right now. You'll see it. Yeah. And as Dana told us, people along that Vancouver coast are starting to wake up to the horror of what's overwhelming them. It is sad. It is yeah. tragic. But we still must be brave. We must act and we must do what we can. Exactly. All right, my friend. I'll see you next week. There he goes, uh, Yochi Shimatsu, and we will uh, pause on that note for 21 hours, come right back with you tomorrow night, and we will have a lot more information for you, like we try to do each day. Have a good day tomorrow, take care, and we'll talk soon.